Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. This is sort of a diminished Realism Overhaul series now because unfortunately I discovered that the problem was uh, was remote tech. And I wouldn't say the problem was remote tech particularly, uh, it's more about the way I've upgraded this series over time and uh, the way things interact now and the fact that it is 64-bit and all that. Uh, so it's it's a lot more complicated because we started a series in 0.23, I upgraded to 0.23.5, then upgraded to 0.24.264 bit, upgraded all the mods along the way except for some mods. For instance, stretchy tanks can't be upgraded to the newest version, so it's an old version of stretchy tanks that I have to keep in the folder. And then there are other mods that are more complicated, like, uh, like the actual tech tree, the realistic progression light tech tree is the 0.23 version because if I try to upgrade it, it's going to break certain parts that were embedded in certain vehicles, and so, uh, mostly the satellites. So, it, it's been a very complicated process, and I've been trying to avoid breaking things, but uh, it seems like something broke, and it was sort of inevitable. So, the plan now is, so I removed Remote Tech temporarily. Uh, well, it's not temporarily, because uh, if you remove Remote Tech now, nothing has its links, right? Now, uh, when I save the file, nobody's going to know what to link to, right? The antennae don't have their little uh, data on them. I don't know how much of that is going to be erased by, uh, by the save file now, but it's probably going to be the case that I would have to add all that stuff back into the persistent file and hope it works if I decide to restore remote tech. So, the plan is to do this mission without remote tech, and then focus on manned missions, which of course do not require any sort of, uh, uh, you know, remote tech uh, interaction. So we don't have to worry about remote tech in the case of manned missions anyway. So that's the plan. But it's sort of a bummer to have to do this mission without remote tech after starting it with it. But uh, there's just no way for me to switch vehicles or even start up this this situation when the landers are separated unless remote tech is not in the folder so that's the situation I've, I've uh, zipped up the saves and all that uh, for every part so if somebody does have any suggestion for how it could be fixed I could go back and do this again properly if we want to try that okay but for now I want to move ahead and we'll do man missions and then I will restart the entire series in in uh, in beta, so this this series will become realistic uh, realism overhaul in KSP alpha, and we're gonna have a realism overhaul in KSP beta. It will be different. It will be sandbox, I think, or at least I will have the tech tree unlocked because we've been unduly hampered by the tech tree in this series. So we will have. Uh, we will have the parts necessary to do amazing things and the main amazing thing I want to do is uh, we're going to put a station in orbit around Earth and the Moon. That, that'll be the goal and then uh, do Keythane mining operations. So stuff like that. So we will focus on that sort of goal of building stations around uh, Earth and its closest neighbor and then we're going to be doing operations using those stations. Okay, so that will be the plan for the new series. That will be in beta, once all the mods get updated. Okay, but first we have some uh, work to do here. I still think I should aim to land a Kerbal on Mars. And so we have to try for that sort of thing. But first I want to finish off this mission. Now for this I, I need to... This is the Deimos lander, so you can see it's already targeting Deimos, and I want to fix its inclination and also boost its orbit up so that it doesn't hit the atmosphere. Again, I just want to try out and see if I can actually do interesting things with Mars and its moons. Obviously, we definitely should put a lander on the surface before trying to send a Kerbal over. Alright. Actually, uh, now that we don't have remote tech, I mean, let, let's, let's try our best to pretend that I have remote tech. So we do have line of sight here. 
Um, the region where we don't have line of sight with uh, Kerbin right now is actually from around here to over here. So we're all right here now. So we are in line of sight. Just try and pay attention to that. I was about to say that, uh, of course, we, we aren't uh, experiencing the electric charge drain. Oh, instead of uh, time warping there, I should fix up the other two. Hold on a sec, let's go to the Phobos Lander. Okay, here's our Phobos Lander. Aside from remote tech, the other candidate was really uh, procedural fairings because the way I stacked the three, the three landers was really weird. And I was afraid that procedural fairings might not be happy with that. And so that, that, that was another possibility and still is. Uh, I mean, there's still some weirdness. For instance, uh, just now I had to activate the engines on this lander manually instead of pressing spacebar. So the whole staging weirdness could be a problem here too. But okay, that's a good inclination change for Phobos. What's the timing on that? 8 hours and 47 minutes. Okay, and then we don't really need to do an inclination change or anything like that for for the Mars lander. So that's going to be a separate thing altogether. Okay, so I'll just uh, see which one I have to do the maneuver for, either Phobos lander or the Deimos lander. And then we'll turn to that, and then we will start aiming for these moons. Okay, so you remember how I said it was remote tech? Well, that might not be the whole story, because I got a tracking station crash uh, just now, but I was able to come back into the game, go to the tracking station, and reach this craft, so uh, I guess it's not quite as severe as it was with remote tech in, because uh, with remote tech in, for some reason when I went to the tracking station, it would immediately freeze, and there was no way for me to access the craft, uh, at least through that. Um, I don't know how else you would access the craft, except maybe Haystack plugin. But, uh, yeah, so... So interesting times. Uh, we'll we'll plunge on ahead and see how far I get. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is the first lander that has to make its adjustment burn. So I'm going to take it in, and we would still be in line of sight with Earth, so it's fine. And this will boost it to a safe periapsis, and so we'll let we'll let it hang out for a while, and we will be turning to the Mars lander after we do both this lander and the and the Phobos lander. Okay, let me uh, get a time warp. Now, you'll see, I'll, I'll press spacebar. Ah, now it works. Oh, weird. So with the Phobos lander, when I tried to press spacebar and activate the engines, that did not work. Okay, looks good and stable three thrusters as you can see there we go let's try to find Mars to get a good look at how far away we are from it as you can see about a one ton lander let me stop it from deviating for a bit and let's just get up oh, nope relative inclination that was its minimum okay so this is all done and rather than going to the tracking station maybe I can switch vessels here that's Mars that's Phobos switch to okay well that works let's just askew the tracking station for a bit now we've only got 18 minutes till this guy has to do its burn This one uh, ended up with more fuel. I wonder how that happened, actually. Oh, did we pump some fuel from the Deimos lander to the bottom? I forget if we did or not. I knew that was a plan at some point that I might need to do that, but I forget if I did. Okay, anyway, we've... It seemed like it had full tanks, didn't it? But anyway, we've got this going for us. Let us time warp. and burn. Now obviously if I was just interested in doing a straight inclination burn we wouldn't be going at this angle. I do want to lift my orbit as well and eventually I'll have to match orbits with these moons and so lifting my orbit will just make that easier actually. 
not a problem. So whatever happens with this, I'm going to have to try and clean things up a bit ahead of uh, starting manned missions, and I'll try and get rid of stuff that we don't need from the save, including more debris, and as much as I can, clear things up. I'll hunt for uh, stuff that uses stretchy tanks and probably get rid of it. We already got rid of the old Pratchett station, which was uh, one of those things that I needed to get rid of. And since for manned missions we don't uh, need the satellite network, I guess we can, uh, maybe we can deorbit it. And so I'll have to do that. I'll think about exactly how I want to set this up. Okay, that was the minimum for the relative inclination there. Or at least Smart ASS must have started wandering. Okay, so we are in safe orbits with the other two, well, that's a, oh yes, a Phobos, right, okay. With the other two landers, let's go to the Mars lander and start looking to land on Mars. The Mars lander, as you can see, is still attached to its base and the heat shield, most importantly, and so obviously that's, that's vital. And I am going to try and bring it down a little bit more on its periapsis. Now I'm going retrograde even though that's not the most efficient way to bring it down because I also want to just burn some velocity off. I don't want it coming into the atmosphere quite as quickly so I'm not too worried about just going straight retrograde. Uh, you would do a radial burn to actually drop the periapsis from this far out. We're still pretty far out uh, if you wanted to do it uh, efficiently. But I actually want to just slow down. I guess we can go a little bit lower. I don't want to be forced into anything, but if we are forced into something, that that's practically what this is for now. Okay, you can see this is carrying a lot more fuel than the others were, and it's got more thrusters. It's got six instead of uh, three. So that's why it's the Mars lander. Now, if we are forced into a... No, that's, that, the solar panels don't look right. Well, and we want them retracted as we go into the atmosphere anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know if uh, we're going to be able to simulate, simulate line of sight here if we are forced down. If we aren't forced down, it'll be fine. But if we are forced down, then, then I'll just have to do what I have to do. Okay, here we go. As things have happened, uh, we've actually been passing periapsis before losing connection to Earth, at least the last time it was sort of like that. Okay, looking good on the arrow break. Hope it just doesn't bring us down too far, that's all. It might. Look at the periapsis going down quickly. Okay, I think we're going down. How much time does it take for it to burn its... No, that's not right at all, is it? So there's something wrong with the staging as well, just in general. How's heat? increasing not too bad though okay um yeah okay right i really need to plan for landing here all right so let's decouple well let's slow down as much as possible then decouple let's take smart ass off sas on I need some sort of landing info. Landing. Time to impact two minutes. We don't have any suicide burn. This is bad.
Okay, this is too slow acceleration. Uh, that's not right. Oh, I see a problem here. Or maybe we're in the ah, we're in the wrong vehicle. Oh no, we're attached. Come on. Ah. Uh, maybe pushing the landing gear down will help? No, it just goes through. Oh, wait, it's got us free. Sort of. Come on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, little lander baby. Come on. Ah, uh, no you can't. Okay, um... This is a bit weird. Oh, maybe if I retract landing gear. No, it just brings it t to it. Come on. No, you get RCS on because we need some stability, perhaps. Come on. Just gotta keep trying this. So it lets go. Maybe this was the buggy part that caused all the problems. Who knows? If we're okay, sort of. No, bad. Okay, there. There. Oh, right. Wow. Okay, but we're not decelerating quickly enough. Um, not at all. Up. Oh, here we go again. Hard fall on on Mars. Ah. Uh, <sighs> well, valiant attempt, but clearly a big problem with how that was attached together. All right. Hmm. Can we switch through the map view here? Let me throw it down before it gives me any sort of message. No, I can't click on anything. Okay. Okay, the tracking station still works right now, so this is good. Sort of. Nope, this is buggy. I'm gonna restart. Okay, back to the tracking station after restarting, and... Okay, it, it works now. So, if you can diagnose this, that'd be great, but uh, it seems like with with uh, Remote Tech in, it just completely crashed. It wouldn't even start ticking up this uh, mission elapsed time. So, that uh, there was no way I would have been able to select a craft, craft like that. But uh, here, without Remote Tech, it just crashes eventually. Uh, and it's, it's sort of uh, weird about the way it decides to glitch out. But uh, I can deal with this. I can deal with this as long as I can get to my craft. So we're going to focus on the Deimos lander next. Uh, we lost the uh, Mars lander, but it was the most difficult one to handle anyway. And with with the way that we were uh, coming down immediately, we would have, under remote tech, lost connection with it. So it, it would probably have been a perished lander anyway. Though maybe with remote tech in, I would have been a little bit more careful and not going as deep into the atmosphere. But... Uh, it's, it's tough to guess. Anyway, let's uh, continue with the Deimos Lander. Okay, here we go. The Deimos Lander has the least amount of Delta V of all of them. And right now you can see it's past its periapsis. It's going back up 
Uh, we can't do any maneuvers on this side just yet, but that's fine. Uh, I don't know if we're in a good position. Well, we might be able to do something. Let's see now. Uh, where would we end up with connection? Is that Earth? No, that's, that's Earth. So, if you look at it, around here we'd have connection. So what can we do from there? Oh, looks like there's something. How much is that going to cost? Oh, not too much. Okay. Though it's probably going to cost a lot more to slow down. I thought I saw... Ooh, an encounter with... Wow. Teimos is not a very big target, so having an encounter with it... Now, that's that's not much of an encounter. It's a zero-second encounter, but... Can we actually finagle it even more? I don't know if I can get periapsis out of this. I don't think so. Yeah, I can't get a periapsis out of this. It's sort of like hitting an asteroid. Not really like hitting a moon at all. I'm going to be satisfied with that for now, and I'll fix it a little bit more as we get in. So, uh, good thing, yeah. Okay, I get the feeling that the best thing I can do is sort of do what we do to rendezvous with asteroids or, or spacecraft, which is, you know, burn the targets, kill relative velocity, and stuff like that. Um, can't see how I can do too much else. So it's not the same, obviously, because of the spheres of influence kind of thing. Oh! It's got the maneuver on the other track. That's not good. Um, no, 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 no. Don't turn around. That, that was an okay place to be. Relative inclination, zero. Closest approach distance, it says 10 kilometers, but I know the closest approach distance doesn't quite work with uh, planets and stuff like that, so we'll say, can't really say, um, how much long do we have? 45 minutes? Let's try burning towards the target. Okay, well something happened. Still not getting any closer really. Nah, it doesn't want to show my relative velocity with the target. Could Megjib help out with this? Or is this too much for it too? Um, not trans... This is, this is tough, I don't even know. Match plane is match velocity with target. My closest approach node. Okay, well I can do that. Oh, but there's a gilly apoapsis there. I assume that's after this node. And I'm gonna take Smart ASS off so I know this direction. But I'm gonna kill the maneuver node. Is this making our orbit look a lot more like... Yeah, it's, it's going in the right direction. Okay, uh, oh. We've just lost our encounter. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, let's let's go close. Let's let's assume we were getting rid of vertic uh, relative velocity, right? That's what we were doing. So now let's go closer to the target. But then it's like the opposite thing. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is so weird. We're getting pretty close to our encounter and this... Oh, wait, wait. Our encounter and escape are different now. Okay, we've got about a minute's worth of time. That's good enough if it's real. And we've got a periapsis. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's hope these things are real now. About a minute's worth of time. Okay. Switch to orbit because uh, we're going to be wanting to retro burn around it.
can't afford a time warp into this after all uh, we've only got seven seconds and then we have so little time in the situation okay retrograde and burn come on don't leave we need an orbit around this thing such as it is. I mean, God, we, we're going to have to burn, like, all of our velocity here. I mean, they used uh, Gilly for the, for the model, I believe, but it's much worse than Gilly, I assure you. Okay, we have passed periapsis, still no orbit, but it's looking good. Wow. So, yeah, much, much worse than Gilly. You thought Gilly was bad. 2.5 meters per second. We are orbiting at a walking pace, folks. You could walk. Well, you could run and escape uh, the, the gravity of, of Deimos. Okay, I don't know about uh, line of sight right now, but I certainly don't want to land on the dark side. So let's go around. Hopefully the math does not decide that I'm actually on an escape trajectory. It's pretty darn close here after all. Oh, there's actually a time warp limit around here. I mean, come on. We're on this little potato roid. Let's get the gear down on the off chance that we accidentally hit something. At this speed, we, we, we could touch down any way we like. Actually, let's take a look at surface. 2.3 meters per second. Um, well, I'll be back with you once we get into some sort of descent path. Okay, I take it back. This is going to take way too long. Um, let's just go straight down. I know it's the dark side and everything, but it's only 2.5 meters per second. How hard can it be? So let's just retro all the way down to the surface. In fact, is there any way we could uh, give it a little bit of a push? Like. Be careful not to escape or anything, though. Okay, well, that's a little bit of a push. Um, maybe even more of a push. Oh, there's the escape velocity. I mean, we're not actually going to escape, but, you know. I don't want any math going awry here. There we go. Gotta have a thermometer, yeah. Let's log. Nope, can't do it. But gravioli should work. Okay, well, no comm devices on this. Really? Well, geez. These antennae are not recognized as comm devices. So basically, we're not going to be able to get data. Ah, well, so we're just going to do this to see whether I can do this and we can't get science from it. Great. Okay, fine. If that's the way it is, that's the way it is. I will complete this mission one way or another. We've, we're already down to two-thirds possibility of success. Let's see how it goes. Okay, we are in total darkness and below a thousand meters. Gonna get rid of the horizontal component right now. Obviously don't want to get rid of the vertical. So let's see. Okay, we are now below one minute to impact, but I'm going to increase that now because I'm going to slow down to uh, one meter per second.
Okay. And now it's time to be patient. Tough to say what a safe touchdown speed would be. When I say safe, I mean no bounce. Of course, I could use RCS to force me down. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, I think we're on the surface. Wish we had a contract to look at so that I could see whether we've actually landed on quote-unquote Gilly. But I think we're down. SAS off. I think, uh, yeah, millimeters per second worth of vertical speed uh, pretty much confirms that we're on the surface. Unfortunately, we can't get any science out of it, and of course, without the contract system, we can't uh, we can't get any funds out of it. But uh, here we are. We successfully landed on Deimos, so one for three so far. Let's go to the Phobos mission, which should actually be a little bit easier. Okay, tracking station work this time, just for the record. And now here we have a good inclination with Phobos. Um, well, we could fix it a little bit. But what we don't have is a particularly good location with it. We should be okay to maneuver here. We really... Actually, we could use Mars's help to bring us down a little bit. Our orbit is very high, but... We could also do that ourselves, and maybe that's the better thing. We've got a fair amount of Delta V in here. I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about Delta V. Maybe worried a little bit about the time it'll take to adjust this orbit. Maybe this is actually going to be harder than Deimos because our orbit is way, way different from, from Phobos, and Phobos is just a well, it's only a little bit bigger. Okay, this time I think I really should take my own advice and focus on pretending it's a actual ob like a spacecraft that we're or um, rendezvousing with. So just try and minimize the closest approach distance. So three kilometers sounds good for a closest approach to any spacecraft. And let's go around. Let's go all the way out and back. And then we will be using the whole target, burn towards target, and then retro burn thing. Okay, so even time warping causes the game to crash, but no matter, we plunge on ahead. I will get this, this experience of landing a probe on Phobos, no matter what. I don't care what the game is going to throw at me. I am adamant about getting this done. So let's try that thing where, uh, so I want to get rid of some relative velocity with the, with the moon. And so I want to match velocities with the target. Uh, okay, we'll do that. Create node. Ooh, that's, that's something. No, that's why I packed more juice into this one anyway. Because, uh, of course, Phobos is uh, moving uh, quite a bit faster, and we're in a very different orbit. Like I said, I probably should have uh, retroburned at Duna Periapsis, but anyway, we will deal with this. So this is ending up to be the more difficult one. When I say Duna Periapsis, obviously, I mean Mars. I mean Mars. And this is much smaller than Bop, I assure you. I need uh, 12 minutes for the full burn time of this stage, but we're not doing the full burn time of this stage. We're not, we're also not entirely efficient in this angle. Hmm. But let's, let's start it out perhaps. We need the time. Uh, 
Okay, this is going to take a while. I'll catch up with you ones who are a little bit closer. Yeah, we probably should have made some adjustments. Well, the problem is I didn't want to make a, an adjustment at periapsis because I was sort of interested in... I guess we would have had connection at periapsis, you know, theoretical connection at periapsis. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we would have. So I really should have brought the orbit down at periapsis instead. That would have been much better. But here we are. Okay, we're getting pretty close. You can see distance to target is only 87 kilometers right now. We're not technically in the sphere of influence of Phobos. We're still retroburning quite heavily. You can see our orbit is getting closer and closer to matching that of Phobos's. But it's a question of whether we can do it in time. Our closest approach distance is not too far off. I have not had to turn towards the target to change that. But still not clear how long our encounter with Phobos is actually going to be. Any way you look at it, it's probably going to be pretty quick since we've still got so much difference to burn off. Even in map view, we are rather close to Phobos. Let's see what it looks like from outside. Yeah, look at that. There it is. Um, why does it look like we're actually aimed directly at it? I don't like this. Uh, I was not bargaining for an, uh, I, I thought we were, what? I wanted it to be a little bit further away from it actually. Uh oh. This is the problem with it not telling me my peri, oh hey. Uh, okay, um, 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 gear down? <laughs> oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, no, 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 oh, ah, well it didn't tell me my periapsis, it just gave me that stupid uh, whatever, uh, indication of encounter and escape right away. That's not fair. We at least have no, nothing. It actually looks a little bit like Minecraft, doesn't it? Oh, that's horrible. So, one for three. We landed on Deimos, but Phobos got us. Yeah, I know I can't autosave at this point. So, yeah, nasty little trick it played on us. This little potato thing. Alright, so uh, next time I'm going to try and cook up a craft that can, yeah, 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 that, that can uh, send that Kerbal over here, but it's going to be tricky. I don't know, maybe, should we do a flyby? Should we try and land on Deimos? Which probably would be safer. Uh, or should we... I don't think we're ready for a landing on Mars. We still haven't gotten a lander down safely on it. Maybe... And uh, without remote tech, I don't want to do unmanned stuff. I'll have to think about it. This... Uh, I don't even know if this uh, install is now stable enough to do anything like that. I was hoping to at least get some science out of this whole thing. Um, this this mission so that I can unlock some parts that might help us on the man mission but now we, we didn't get any science from it so I can't unlock the parts that I wanted so it's gonna be tricky alright anyway uh, we have uh, we have seen how this mission turned out and I will ponder what to do next with that thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.